Hey folks, it's Vic, High Desert Man, and today we're doing subscriber short number three. We're doing another Crown Heads cigars. You can never have enough Crown Heads. It is the Mason Dixon Project North. Stick around. All right, guys, welcome back to another subscriber short where I do a short review on a uh, cigar gifted to me by one of my subscribers. This one coming to me from my buddy, Matthew Scaife. Matthew, thank you so much. Um, he reached out to me back in uh, November, early November, and asked me if I had tried these, and I said I have not. And he got me the North and the South. Let's talk about uh, the background on the cigar. The cigar debuted in 2014 as a limited edition release only for the Eastern side of the United States. And, um, and they made a North and a South version. The Mason Dix Dixon Project draws its inspiration from a boundary created by Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon in 1767 to settle a dispute between the colonies of Pennsylvania and Maryland. The Mason Dixon line is best known as an unofficial boundary prior to the Civil War, separating free states from those that still practice, uh, practice slavery. The line never stretched all the way across the U.S. The wrapper, Ecuadorian Habano, binder and fillers, Nicaragua. Let's, uh, first, the, the first thing I've got to say about this wrapper is it is awesome. The wrapper is absolutely gorgeous. I took some nice pictures. We're going to put those in the video. It's, it's got a very satiny toothiness to it. It's really toothy, yeah, like a matte brown color or something. It's it's just really cool. I have not seen this look. A lot of times with cigars you see the the oils kind of laying on the surface and the, the cigar looks shiny and oily and stuff. This one's very dull looking, very matte looking, and, um, and it just looks really awesome. I, I almost don't want to cut it, but I will. I believe this is a 2015 version because I, I can't find any evidence that they continued this after 2015 and they were only limited edition cigars. The wrapper has a, a, a musty, musty barnyard, but it's a different barnyard than you normally get. Oh my gosh, this thing is going down. Beautiful. We are at 64% on the humidimeter. Mm. Cold draw has a really nice mix between dark chocolate and milk chocolate. Light roast coffee. Matthew, I can't thank you enough, buddy. I cannot thank you enough for getting me a couple Crown Head cigars I have not yet tried. Just getting a lot of black pepper right now. And some, actually I'm getting some... Uh, almost espresso notes but it, it's it's kind of somewhere between like a just a dark roast coffee and espresso these were blended at the my father uh cigars what is it my father cigars sa esteli nicaragua factory which is uh, don pepin garcia's factory Now the story behind the cigar is that uh, Crown Heads only did these to, uh, well, only to stores in the North and the South, and um, they, you know, they did a a uh, dark dark wrapper for the uh, North and a lighter wrapper for the South. I'm really loving it. I'm really loving it right now. All right, guys, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back when I get a bit into the first third here. All right, guys. Never mind these. You don't need to know what's going on. Some of those initial flavors have kind of waned now. It's uh, black pepper is still there but it's it's somewhere between black pepper and just a hint of cayenne in the nose now maybe a little bit of white pepper as well it's just kind of a blend of peppers the espresso notes have 
faded completely and it's more of just kind of a medium roast coffee now there's a bit of a creaminess that has come on that is you know with the uh, there's some dark chocolate and with that creaminess it almost kind of reminds you of a milk chocolate as well medium body the cream is really light the creaminess is really light it, it fades real quick uh, but overall there's a medium body kind of coats the back of the tongue a little bit on the sides as well but it doesn't come forward very much at all oh it is good we'll catch you on the when we get into the last third getting a little bit better right now and it, it almost it it's been getting working its way into bitter for a little bit about since where the ash is now from that point um, it, it kind of feels to me like I smoked it a little too slow still has some great flavors really enjoyable cigar this could be an everyday cigar I, I could smoke this every day the, the overall flavors kind of remind me of a mix between the Hirochi Robina Claro and the Hirochi Robina Fox Cigar Collaboration. Those two cigars really showcase the wrappers well. This one has some of those flavors but just muted a little bit. Really good retro hail still. In this last third uh, it's gone mostly to cedar, leather, the pepper is still there but it's very faint now. Uh, the coffee is still there a little bit, but the creaminess doesn't seem to be there anymore. Uh, none of the chocolate notes are there anymore. Great smoke. Fantastic cigar to end my day with. Matthew, thank you very much, buddy. I can't wait to get to that South Mason Dixon project. Well, let's get to the, to the rating. All right, construction absolutely beautiful cigar perfect burn the the wrapper on this thing was just gorgeous I wish I, I almost wish I could get that wrapper leaf and use it as I don't know something in one of my smoke chests or something the wrapper was just gorgeous so five on the construction 4.5 4.5 4 on the burn 4.5 on the flavor it only lost half a point because of this last third body was a four transition three price 4.5 I didn't talk about the price I believe he got this at 9.99 10 bucks for this sit stick definitely worth it that brings the total to 4.25 easily an everyday smoke if I could get it every day Matthew thank you very much I can't wait to get to that south stick it is time for the Mason Dixon South. The South is same blend but Connecticut shade wrapper. <clears throat> and here we go. I'm pairing it with cold brew from uh, this is the new uh, what what blend was it? The Mountain Mountain Fresh, I think it was called from late for the train coffee that I just did the video on <clears throat> really good cold brew well, it cracked a little but it felt really good going in well that's weird this one's at 60 percent but it's been it's been out of the humidor and it's really dry here right now wow it is amazing what kind of difference just a wrapper makes oh okay yeah now now I'm starting to get some of the flavors that I was tasting in the in the north mmm mm-hmm yeah there's a lot of those same flavors that I was getting in the north but it is uh, it, it's got more of a uh, more of just an earthiness <clears throat> from that Connecticut wrapper maybe a little more a uh, little bit more coffee notes and the coffee is more of just a uh, 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 just a black coffee All right, guys I'm gonna smoke on this for a bit we'll be back at the third to uh, talk about it some more stick around we're well into this second third folks 
And I gotta say, this is a pretty good cigar. It definitely has some similar flavors to the North. I'm pretty sure these came from 2015. Um, the wrapper on this looks very nice. It's a very good looking wrapper. Again, these came out of the My Father Cigars factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. And the subscriber who sent these to me was Mitt, uh, Matthew Scaife. This one is... <clears throat> It seems a little bit more on the mild side than the North. The uh, it's a lot of the same flavors, like I said, but but they're different. Like the coffee, the coffee is a very different coffee from what I got in the first one. Just the right amount of uh, punch in the nose. Pretty smooth. Really earthy. Woody and earthy. This one's got a lot of woody and earthy notes. Maybe a hint of nutmeg I'm picking up. This Mountain Fresh Cold Brew from Late for the Train Coffee. It is good. Holy crap, it is good. I don't adulterate mine like Kevin does with all the sugar and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah, okay. I'll bow out and, and get into the last third here. The... Uh, the finish seems about the same. The finish is different, but it in, in how long it lasts, it's about the same as the North. Um, <clears throat> now, if I remember correctly, the the North sort of it, it seemed to linger uh, toward the back of my tongue and, and the sides in the back. This one, this one seems to come forward more. It's a, I, I am sensing it in the back, but it, it, it's just kind of over the whole tongue. It's got some good body. Uh, I, I would say it's a medium body. Uh, it doesn't last real long. The finish is not real long on it, but um, boy, it, it tastes good. All right, guys, we'll catch up with you in just a little bit. Um, having a little bit of... Uh, I took off the band, which came off much nicer than the uh, band on the north. But I'm having problems now. It's uh, my wrapper has cracked a little bit. Very surprising. This one inched out the north in overall score, but slightly less on the uh, on the flavor. So uh, let's let's go over the score, and then I'll kind of wrap up what I'm tasting here. All right, construction similar to last night. Um, I gave it a five. It's it's Connecticut shade. To me, not a beautiful wrapper, but a um, but this wrapper was very nice. So I can't uh, I can't diss it just because of my own personal taste. So construction five burn was a five. It burned even better than uh, the cigar last night. Last night I uh, or the the north got a four point five. This one gets a five. Flavor flavor on the north was four point five. Flavor on this one is three point eight. Primarily because of that Connecticut shade. I'm, as you know, I'm just not a huge Connecticut shade fan, but this was a good cigar. Uh, body 3.5. The body on the North was four. Transition on this one was a four. Transition on the North was a three. The uh, I'll get into why I gave this one a higher score on transition in a little bit. Uh, and then price same 4.5. That made the overall on this cigar 4.3 where the North got a 4.25, so right in the same ballpark. Really, it ultimately all comes down to flavor, and I liked the North more than I liked this one. But uh, this was an enjoyable smoke. I'm really having problems now. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not dinging this one for what's going on right now, because <clears throat> the, uh, I'll explain why. These bands, if, if this cigar is in fact from 2015, I'm about 99% sure it is, uh, these bands have been sitting with that glue on there for a long time. Uh, it, I, I had to kind of struggle to get this one started to get my fingernail under it. So I was kind of squeezing the cigar and everything and it did initially crack and then when I pulled it off, it pulled a little chunk of leaf off uh, and that's when my unraveling started and stuff. Transition. Why did transition go higher on this one? When I when I rate transition, I'm not rating. I'm not giving a number of transitions that I experienced. Although I could do that, I'm just rating overall 
how were the transitions for me uh, throughout the experience of the cigar. This one had a really interesting uh, transition in this last third that uh, everything just sort of all of a sudden came together and it everything got a little bit more mellow but it seemed like all the flavors blended better uh, and it, it happened almost I mean I it's it was almost as if I pulled it into that transition it was really weird I would say that um, dusty earth and uh, and some like white peppers and stuff are the prominent flavor there's a very distinct black coffee on it as well it's sort of a mild black coffee and then there is something that I'm sort of equating with like a nutmeg note on it the body on it was uh, was nice a little bit lighter than on the north but boy really really good cigar hope you guys enjoyed the video hit the subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel please hit the bell and give me some uh, props on YouTube and we'll catch you on the next one guys stay rugged